for tonight. Mr. Wopsle is going to test you on what you've learned. Please, miss. Pip were late again, miss. Was. Pudding head. Boys, this evening I shall begin with a reading from the works of the Sweet Swan of Avon. Oh. William Shakespeare! Shakespeare. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come. Talk to you, Biddy. Well, I'm here. I wanted to ask you something. Will you teach me? I do, don't I? I mean, specially. What's this, Pip? You know everything. I don't know anything. Who says so? Miss Havisham uptown? No. That pretty little niece of hers, then. Biddy. Lord, I love us. The wait, Grandma! You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you now? Vipers! Villains! Villains! I'm me as well. Don't see why I should. You're an orphan, I'm an orphan, and both of us was brought up by hand. Were. Were. Thanks, Biddy. <laughs> Pip. Book learning won't make you a gentleman. How do you know I want to be a gentleman? Because your head's been stuffed full of all sorts of nonsense since you were a baby, that's how. Anyway, how could I ever be a gentleman? Good night, Biddy. Good night, Pip. me, old chap. Joe? Joe, am I common? Mrs. Stella, I mean the young lady at Miss Havisham's, she says I am. Well, Pip, old chap, that ain't at all clear. You're most uncommon in some things. You're uncommon small. Likewise, you're an uncommon scholar. I'm ignorant and backward, though. You think much of me, that's all. Be it so or be it not, you must be a common scholar before you can be an uncommon. Whether common folks, as to wages and earnings, might be better off keeping their own company instead of going round so often to play with uncommon folks. Oh, Joe, I'll stop going there if you want me to. I'll never go there again. No, old chap, no. What I may want. What, what I may reckon to be right, well, that ain't to be looked into now without putting your sister on the rampage. And that ain't to be thought of as being done intentional.
today, boy? Poor dear cousin Matthew. <laughs> Poor indeed. Poor as... Stand here, boy, until you're wanted. Uh, Stella, dear child. Yes. Poor cousin Matthew. Nobody's enemy but his own. Very true, my dear. Much better choose someone else for an enemy. We are commanded to love our neighbor, cousin Raymond. Sarah Pocket. If a man isn't his own neighbor, who is? Boy! Boy! You're to go up now. Estella, dear. I trust Miss Havisham knows that we are here. She don't want you yet. Well, her own nearest relations. Well, am I pretty? Uh, I think you're very pretty. Am I insulting? Not so much as last time. Not so much? No. What do you think of me now, little coarse monster? Why don't you cry? Go up. Go on. Go and tell upstairs. I won't tell. Hmm. Whom have we here? Boy of the neighborhood? Hmm? Yes, sir. Hmm. I have a pretty large experience of boys, and you're a bad set of fellows. Now, mind you behave yourself. Yes, sir. Out of the way. Come in. So the days have worn away, have they? Yes, Mum. Today's... I don't want to know. Are you willing to work? Oh, yes, Mum. Then go into that opposite room. Wait there till I come. Yes, Mum. What do you think that is? A great cake. A bride cake. Mine. Walk me. Walk me. This is my birthday, Pip. Many happy... I don't suffer it to be spoken of. Those people downstairs. 
Leeches. All of them. My relations. They come here on the day, but they dare not refer to it. On this day of the year, long before you were born, that heap of decay was brought here. It and I have worn away together. The mice have gnawed at it, and sharper teeth than theirs have gnawed at me. Oh, Miss Havisham. Walk me, walk me. Dear Miss Havisham, how well you look. I do not. I'm yellow skin and bone. How should she look well, poor soul? The idea. And how are you, Mrs. Camilla? Oh, as well as can be expected. Why? What's wrong with you? Nothing that, uh, worth mentioning. Only then I... don't mention it. Ah, <clears throat> <coughs> well, uh, we're all here, aren't we? <coughs> all except poor cousin Matthew. There, he never mixes with family ties. Never comes to see Miss Havisham. Oh, he'll come to see me at the last. I'm dead and laid upon that table. That will be his place there. At my head. And yours there. And your husband's there. And Sarah Pocket's there. And Georgiana's there. Hello, young fellow. Who let you in? Miss Estella. Who gave you the leave to prowl about? Miss Estella. Come and fight. Stop a minute, though. You ought to have a reason. Oh! There. Laws of the game, regular rules. You've won. No, thank you. Good afternoon. You may kiss me if you like. Something had better come of it. What is it? Ten years it's been going on? Oh, something will, ma'am. Rely on Miss Havisham for that. Something in a money way, I should think. Or property. Pro property? 
Indeed, it might be property. Right, here is the boy. I'm up, uptown. Uptown, eh? Now be sure and give my humble respects to Miss Havisham. Don't be late back. You're trouble enough as it is. Leave you with it, ma'am. What think you, Joseph? You'll get no opinion from this fool's head. Or none worth listening to, anyway. You're growing tall, Pip. Tell me the name again of that blacksmith of yours. Uh, Joe Gargery, ma'am? Gargery. He's the master to whom you're to be apprenticed. Well, I... I suppose so, ma'am. Then it had better be done at once. Would this Gargery come here with you and bring your indentures, do you think? I, uh... Well, he... He'd be honored, I'm sure, ma'am. Then let him come. Does she get prettier and prettier, Pippa? Do I? Yes, I, I think you do. Let Gargery come soon. And come alone with you. This boy's sister is your wife. You are the husband of this boy's sister. Uh, Pip, I mean to say as I up and married your sister. I understand you reared him with the intention of taking him for your apprentice. You know, Pip, it were always looked forward to between us as being calculated to lead to larks. <laughs> Normally, the boy's family would pay you a premium for his apprenticeship. You expect no such payment, I assume? Why don't you answer? Pip, I mean to say, that were not a question requiring an answer between you and me. Such answer being no. Well, I shall pay the premium. Pip has earned it. Twenty-five guineas. Give it to your master, Pip. Very liberal of you, Pip, old chap. As such is received and grateful welcome, though never looked for. Goodbye, Pip. Let them out of stomach. Am I to come again? No. Gertrude is your master now.
Bye, Miss Havisham. condescend to come back to such low society as this. I'm sure I do. Well? Ah, uh, well, uh, Miss Havisham did make it particularly clear that we was to give her, um, now, was it compliments or respects, Pep? Uh, compliments. Her compliments to Mrs. Jones. Oh, bravo, Mum. Much good they'll do me. And? How much? What would present company say to ten pounds? Pretty good. Not much, but pretty good. Then what would present company say to twenty pounds? Handsome, that'd be the word. Princely. Twenty pounds, Uncle P. It's twenty-five guineas. Well... Money. I said it would be money. Uncle Pay. One, two, three, four. You're early. What? For your lesson. Won't be needing any more lessons now, Biddy. I'm apprentice to Joe. It's done. Wonderful news. Isn't it what you've always wanted? Still, there's no cause to give up your lessons. Well, what use is book learning to a blacksmith? No more than to a duke or a bishop. It's useful for its own sake. as him, tant, the only one what can go up town. Now, don't lose your temper. No, I shall if I like. Now, come now, master, no favouring in this shop. Well, you stick to your work as well as most. All right, then, tis only fair. Like you, you fool. You mean holidays to great idle hulkers like this. Are you that rich, Joe Gargery, to waste wages? I wish I was his master. You'd be everybody's master if durst. And a match for any rogue. Even you, who are the worst looking and the blackest rogue between this and France. So, now. And you're a foul shrew, Mother Gargery. And if that make a good judge of rogues, then you ought to be a good one. What? Do you hear what the creature says to me? To your wedded wife. Now, Orlick. And if oh. she was mine, I'd take her outside, hold her head under the pump, and joke it out of her. So, now. Are you standing for that? Are you a man? Orlick, you'll have to step outside. Please, too. Joe will work him all right. Joe will work him all right. Come <laughs> on. 
Honours even, Orlick. No hard feelings. None. For you, Master. Joe, do you think perhaps I ought to make Miss Havisham a visit? Well, Pip, whatever for? Well, it's been a year since I was bound apprentice, and I never even thanked her. Well, that's true, but she might think that you wanted something, that you you expected something of her. Well, why didn't I say I don't? You might, old chap, and, and she might credit it. Similarly, she mightn't. You see, Pip, old chap, Miss Havisham done the handsome thing by you, but when she done it, that were an end on it. Oh, I know that, Joe. Well, can I go? Well, Pip, if you promise me this, that if there be anything in the way of a frost in the manner of your being received by Miss Havisham, you never go there again. I promise. Remember, old chap, Frost. Want. You'll get nothing. I, uh, I only wanted you to know that I'm doing well, and I'm always much obliged to you. Well, you can come now and again. Come on your birthday. Ah, looking for Estella, eh? I hope she's well. Gone abroad. Far out of reach. Educating for a lady. Prettier than ever. And admired by all. I go your way. I bend my steps towards the three jolly bargemen, there to seek the cup that cheers, as the poet says. Hmm? Is the church never to be thrown open to a man like me? I tell you, I despair of it. Not a word of this, you understand. I speak in confidence. My thoughts are turning towards London. And it is the immortal bard who points the way. There is a tide in the affairs of men. Orlick? Huh? You're out late. Well, you're out late, too. We've been talking of the wider world, Orlick. Of new horizons. You been uptown? Up and down and all around. By the by, the guns is going again. Are the elks? Yeah, some of the birds has flown the coop. Bib! Bib! What's to do? I must get to the forge. Oh, Bib! Bib, wait for me! What's the matter?
looks more like a drawing than a letter. A hammer. Could be, I suppose. Orlick. Could she be trying to tell us Orlick did it? Orlick was uptown that night. He says. I saw him myself on the road. Did you see which way he came from? Anyway, the constables were sure it was one of the prisoners from the Elks. Because of a bit of leg iron half eaten away with rust that must have lain on the marshes for years. Constables. You're here to help me with my book learning. Paid to keep house, not to teach. Such a fine figure of a woman as you once were. I would. Would what? I want to be a gentleman. Don't you think you'd be happier staying as you are? No, but I'm not happy. I hate my life. I hate the forge. I hate being a blacksmith. I'm ashamed to be one. And ashamed of Joe? Oh, no. No, of course not. You... Well... You don't treat him as kindly as you once did. Oh, don't you understand, Biddy? I've seen a different world. If I'd not been to Miss Havisham's, I'd be content with what I am. And if you'd never seen Estella, it's for her you want to be a gentleman. Yes. To spite her or to win her? I don't know. The best way you could spite her is be to forget her. As to winning her, is she worth it? But I admire her dreadfully. One thing I'm glad of, Pip, is that you've told me. Thank you for that. Biddy, I'd always tell you everything. <laughs> Till you're a gentleman. Oh, and I'll be kinder to Joe, I promise. Till you're a gentleman. I never will be, will I? Do listen to this, Pip. In awful pomp and melancholy state, see settled reason on the judgment seat, or should it be sate? Judgment seat. Judgment seat. Around her crowd, distrust and doubt, What's and fear, take, and thoughtful foresight, and torment. From information I have received, I have reason to believe that there is amongst you a blacksmith by name Joseph Gargery. Which is that man? I'm the blacksmith. You have an apprentice, commonly known, I believe, as Pip. Is he here? I wish to have a private conference with you two. I suggest we go to your place of residence. Come. Come on, then. Hm. My name is Jaggers. I am a lawyer in London. I have some unusual business to transact with you. 
And I should begin by pointing out that I am not the originator of it. Excellent. I act as the confidential agent of another. No more, no less. Now, Mr. Gargery, I am the bearer of an offer to relieve you of this young fellow, your apprentice. An offer, need I say, that is greatly to his advantage. How much would you want to cancel his indentures? Well, Lord forbid that I should want anything for, for not standing in the way of Pip's advancement. You mean you want nothing? Nothing. Remarkable. So then, now I address myself to this young fellow. And the communication I've got to make is that he has great expectations. I am to inform him that he is to come into a handsome property. Further, that it is the desire of the present possessor of that property that he be immediately removed from his present sphere of life and from this place and brought up as a gentleman. In short, a young man of great expectations. However, there are conditions. First, you will always bear the name of Pip. Second, the identity of your benefactor shall remain a profound secret until that person decides to reveal it. Third, you are most positively prohibited from making any inquiries on this head. Do you accept these conditions? I should hope so. Now, to practical matters. There is already lodged in my hands a sum of money amply sufficient for your suitable education and maintenance. You will please regard me as your guardian. Well, I'm greatly obliged, sir. No need to be. I am paid for my services or I would not render them. First point, education. There is a tutor I have some knowledge of. I don't recommend, note, because I never recommend anybody. The gentleman I refer to is known as one Mr. Matthew Pocket. You know the name? Is he, is he not a relation of Miss Havisham, sir? That is not the question. The question is, will he do? Well, if you recommend him, sir. I never recommend. Well, if you advise it, sir. That's better. You will require money and clothes. You seem dumbfounded, Mr. Gargery. I am. It's still within my instructions to make you a present as compensation for the loss of Mr. Pip's services. Pip is that welcome to go free with his services to honor and fortune, as no words can say. But do you think that money could compensate me for the loss of that little child, or come to the forge? You're never the best of friends. Come now, Mr. Gargery, no trimming with me. Say what you mean to say. If you have a price, state it. You come to my place, a bull baiting and badgering me? Step out! I mean to say, if you're a man, come on! Joe! I mean to say that what I say, I mean to say, and stand or fall by. Joe! Well, Mr. Pip, if you are to become a gentleman, the sooner you leave here, the better. I shall expect you in London this day week. Good day to you. Joe! I will not be a bull baited and badgered in my own place. Jaggers. Well? Would there be any objection of my taking leave of Miss Have? Well, of someone I might know uptown before I go? No, no objection. When you get to London, come straight to me. You have my card. Good day. Good day, sir. No. What do you think of it, Biddy? Isn't it wonderful?
Wonderful? Wonderful. I'm going out. I want to walk. I want to run. How now, my lord? Upon my soul, don't I knew you? Don't I knew you? Get away with you, you good-for-nothing vagabond. And I'm as good as any blacksmith's apprentice this side of Tuesday. Get away with you. Now, my dear sir, this is a very sweet article. Really extra super. Come. Very much in vogue among the nobility and gentry for light summer wear. My dear good friend! I give you joy of your good fortune, well-deserved, sir. Oh, well-deserved indeed. And to think that I should have been the humble instrument that set him on the way to such, such expectations. Uh, I'll take this, Mr. Trapp. An excellent choice, sir. An excellent choice. Door. We know London gentlemen can't be expected to patronize local work as a rule, but if you would give us a turn now and then, we'd greatly esteem it. I'm going to London, Miss Pocket, and I'd, I'd like to say goodbye to Miss Havisham. Well. Well, Pip. I, uh, I thought that you would kindly not mind my taking leave of you, Miss Havisham. Don't go, Sarah. This is a pretty figure you cut, Pip. I've come into such good fortune since I last saw you, Miss Havisham, and I'm, I'm so grateful for it. Ah, yes. I've heard about it. I've seen Mr. Jaggers. You're adopted by a rich person. Yes, Miss Havisham. Not named? No, Miss Havisham. And Mr. Jaggers is your guardian? Yes, Miss Havisham. Well, you have a promising career ahead of you. Be good. Deserve it, and abide by Mr. Jagger's instructions. Goodbye, Pip. You always keep the name of Pip. Oh, 
knows but what this unknown patron won't go and leave him everything. I'll see him off. Goodbye, Miss Brooklyn. 